games. That is mind blowing. The the hover on Neela is available. If they want to lock it in, <laughs> it is available. I wouldn't necessarily anticipate that with Zeri available on the card. Yumi yeah. has been banned though, but something like the Lulu could go alongside. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, something like, the, well, the Wukong, Zeri, and then you do end up pick, taking the uh, Lulu on the next rotation. And with Poppy gone, Wukong incredibly strong and has been such a good pick for both Tien and also JJ over the course of playoffs. So imagine you take the Zeri here then for top esports, and then you can start to kind of move on towards your merry way. Um, EDG, that's where the big question marks start to come out, because yes, you could take the Azir for a scout if you want to, but I feel like at the moment, when you've got the Callista, having an Azir doesn't really fit the style that you want to go for, where, you know, Callista wants to play aggressive, play for early dragons, Azir kind of wants to take it a little bit slow, pay for, for later scaling, so I'm always a bit of a unsure about that mix match between how the two champions want to play. Yeah, looks like we are having a bit of an issue with the champion yeah. select, so hopefully we'll be able to get that resolved and get back into things ASAP, but I do just want to quickly mention uh, in terms of you know, the way these two teams have been playing across the course of playoffs, we've seen a lot more from each. Like, when you look at the top esports players, they've got 10 games of footage for you to pick through. On the side of EDG, it's closer to 20. They have yeah. 17 <laughs> games each across the course of playoffs so far. So, uh, almost double the amount of gameplay in playoffs. So, top esports have a lot of footage to work through. And considering the fact that top esports were the ones to win this matchup last time these two teams faced off in playoffs in that round four it was top esports that won 3-2 so you feel like coming into this one top esports should be the favorite with that said edg starting on the blue side you know globally blue side has been favored and i feel like you know edg coming out with a strong start with this Callista and top esports seemingly unsure whether or not they want to go for that Zeri because one of the answers to this Zeri has been early aggression. Yeah, I think there there's like a very kind of definitive game plan that we've seen EDG come into a lot of their series with, which is like trying to enable some sort of strong mid jungle. Like we've seen like buys that can like play through mid lane with things like a, a Swain, or we've seen it where you can go towards things like the Wukong with a Lissandra, the even a Trundle Lissandra combo, something along those lines that just says, hey, we can play to set up scout early and then lean that pressure into the bottom side of the map, leaning towards things like dragons because both these teams very high priority in the dragons are actually tied second in um uh, over the course of both regular season and playoffs yeah. at 60 percent they're tied second in the league for dragon control so i expect we're seeing a lot of that it is going to be the azir that's locked in for scout though and we've got that renata for mako as well paired with that Callista. so when you were talking about having a strong bot lane munch i mean renata Callista doesn't get much yeah. stronger <laughs> I mean, this is the bot lane combo that was just permanently banned during the regular split, right? No team would let it through because it was just too dominant. And you've got a composition here with the Renata and the Azir that will do well if they can keep top esports at arm's length. Uh, but Knight doesn't want to stay at arm's length as he locks in that Akali. This is a man that wants to go ham. Yeah, I mean, it's something that definitely as you get to the later portion of the game can put a lot of threat onto the EDG backline. Um, you've got great dive set up as well alongside the Wukong, so you've got that partner to go for. The big question now for me, though, as we start to go through the draft is, well, actually what JJ was going to go for, because Vi was gone, Trundle, Sejuani. Looks like he will go back towards the uh, Zinzel here. And at least when you've got the Renata there to try and help speed up, increase attack speed, it can work very well with a Zinzel still to try and play through this kind of like fighter with the Callista. Make sure you're setting up for these early dragons, looking for pressure on this bot side. It looks like Flandre will just go immediately towards the Nar here. And we'll have to see what the counter pick is going to be. Yeah, and crucially, this is only the third game of Nar for Flandre across playoffs. He's 100% win rate on that pick in playoffs. But... It's a takeaway from Wayward, who's played it five times his most played champion in playoffs by a margin. But now, counter pick, Dude. Wayward hovering the Yone. And He's Dagda, been... I know you've been looking at solo Q. Yes! <laughs> Let's go. He's been looking at this in solo Q quite a bit. He's been trying to bring it out as a couple of counter picks. And Wayward will lock in the Yone. So it might have been taking a bit of um, inspiration from like some broken blade across in the LEC, but this is actually a great matchup for Wayward. And now you look at like the threat that you have for top esports onto that back line. Everyone diving in on top of the likes of the Callista, trying to make her life uncomfortable. 
So Viper is definitely going to have his work cut out here for himself to try and keep himself up, topped up and healthy with the Renata to try and aid that endeavor. But also looking at this Azir, the Emperor's Divides are going to have to be on point from Scout in these team fights. Yeah, the hostile takeovers as well from the Renata, right? Yeah. It feels like both Azir and Renata, even though you think of Azir as a hyper carry in the late game and he will still fulfill that role, it does feel like Scout's going to somewhat have to play appeal role against this kind of composition. EDG wanting to protect Viper. Top eSports, they just want to go in with a Yone and an Akali. Like, there's a lot of skill expression here for the solo laners of Top eSports. They're coming in from the upper bracket. They're the ones with the advantage. They were so close to getting their series against JDG, going 2-0 up to start that series off, but couldn't quite finish things off. Got reverse swept, and now they're coming in angry. They want to prove themselves once more against EDG and make it back to that final to take on JDG once again. And I mean, when you talk about trying to bring a bit of spice into game number one, it feels like we're getting a bit of a spicy draft at least coming through from top esports, right? With this Yone coming through, getting a ton of dive, the Akali for night. This is where it's like, okay, cool. We're going to just test you. We're going to see how we can try and find flanks around these neutral objectives, especially as we talked about both teams very, being very high on dragon control. It feels like this is going to be a messy, bloody scrap every time that dragon comes onto the field. It absolutely does, but we are headed to the field here. Summoner's Rift on your screens as we head towards game number one between Top Esports and EDG, a rematch of round four of playoffs. Top Esports coming in as the first seed into playoffs, and they want to make it back to the final. They want that rematch against JDG, but EDG not going anywhere. Your current world champions, and they want to reprove that fact. They want to go into world strong. I mean, they want to be able to defend their title, right? Looking good, doing so, potentially having a very similar storyline to that 2021 world streak where they came in with the LPL championship under their belt, adding their sixth title to the cabinet. And now we'll have to see if they can take down top esports, put themselves in towards that world stage off the back of the break. Yeah, and I want to kind of mentioned the fact that, you know, you mentioned six titles for EDG domestically in the LPL. A world title, an MSI title. Like, this is an organization that has plenty of wins under their belt. Top Esports can't really quite say the same in terms of that. They've got one LPL win. They've got a mid-season cup win, which seems to quite count as much as in MSI. But then one, night, one thing I will say for Top Esports that EDG can't say is Top Esports back to back to Masia Cup champions. So I think we know who's winning this trophy cabinet race. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to Masia Cup Worlds and MSI title, you know, it's it's evens out. <laughs> you know, that's how it goes. <laughs> but uh, I definitely got to say, like, I have been like a kid at Christmas waiting for this series. Like, we saw that this was coming up bunch, and I know, like, the two of us were just chatting back and forth, like, excited children at the thought that this is going to be the series we get to cast because this is going to be insane and look at the picks that we get to start it off as well so Dagda, i want you to break down this top lane a little bit for me because you know we see akali and azir in the mid lane we see zeri and Callista in the bottom lane we don't often see yone up top how does this function against them so a huge amount of the advantage that Yone has is his ability to close the gap, right? And as you can see here, right, a lot of the counters that we've traditionally looked at for Nar are things that can control uh, the space between himself and the his opposition. So he doesn't like going up with things that can outrange him, but he also doesn't like things like Aurelia that can close that gap. Yone that can close that gap. You get great right trade patterns. He, if he ends up hopping away, as you you cool as Yone, you just hop back to your shadow. You make sure that you're all totally fine. But I'm gonna have to hold on to this point because JJ and Tien are kind of eyeing each other up, but it looks like uh, JJ is just going to go for the Rift Scuttler instead of trying to go towards the yeah, JJ does get that bottom scuttle crab. Nice little bit of damage under the tower there from Wayward as well, not taking damage back in return. And Wayward moves over towards this top scuttle crab by the looks of things. Can't tell if he's actually going for that, but I think just returning to the lane as Tien moves forward through the mid lane. No sense of hiding what he's doing here. He's going for that top crab, and he said it, JJ, come and stop. Yeah, I mean, oh, there you go. Good trade. Right, Jackie Love ignited. Five for a bit of damage under the tower. Won't turn into anything too much here, but Jackie Love oh, no. with his cleanse now gone. That's a big deal. With his cleanse now gone, his jungler gone to top side, and JJ is still hovering around bot lane. Mid first. 
Etienne trying to get in onto Scout here, but he won't be able to close that gap back towards the bottom lane. My eyes are turning because Jackie of half HP right here. Took another chunk while we were looking at JJ, but I think JJ could have finished that recall in the end. Ward comes out from Jackie Lup. I'm not sure if he quite saw JJ recalling or not. So would nice little dodge on that stun there. Just going to be trading back and forth in the top lane. This feels tense, though. Yeah. <laughs> This feels very tense. I think Jackie Love finally taking a breath in that bot lane when he realized that JJ wasn't there. Because he had Tien, who was moving around in that bot side to spot out that JJ wasn't there. They spotted JJ thanks to that ward in the early stages. So at least everyone kind of going, all right, we can back away. We can keep ourselves safe. Early Cole picked up for Wayward, though. He knows that this is going to be a lane that he's probably going to stick around in for a while. See if he can get some nice like 1v1 trades. But it definitely feels like in this game, a lot of attention going to be on this bot side, especially Especially when you look at like Callista, Renata, and you look at this Inferno Dragon that's up on the cards, a huge amount of this early game will be looking at bot side. Yeah, and uh, with an Infernal Drake, is the first Drake of the game as well. Not super surprising, right? A lot of available stats there, especially with. You know, I feel like people have stopped talking about the reason oh! Dragon Buffs was Scout's just going in in the mid lane. Night in trouble, 150 HP, another chunk, but Scout doesn't quite have the damage. I mean, we said it already, like, at least in my opinion, Scout is the best Azir that we have in the league, already putting the hurt on towards Knight, and this doesn't get easier, like, I will, like, the highlight plays that Scout has been able to bring out on this champion consistently is absolutely absurd, and honestly, I'm surprised that top esports were willing to give this champion over to Scout, I think this is kind of like a uh, testing of the water for top esports to see look is this a champion that we have to be worried about and uh, at least knight might be going back to the drawing board going please no is here just no more <laughs> yeah perhaps but he is on that akali cs relatively even crucially did survive with flash available so all things considered even though scout getting a good amount of damage down there getting a good bit of pressure down it hasn't led to anything just yet so knight still on the cards and if he can get out of this mid lane influence one of these early skirmishes especially now he's post level six that's where things can start to look good for top esports we'll have to see how that continues in the mid lane because we keep on seeing way we're trying to find these opportunities in the top lane but flying trade doing a really good job in this matchup to maintain a cs lead and maintain control of this lane yeah some nice fancy feet in the top lane and knight might need to do the same here in mid lane still has his flash didn't end up burning that in the last fight, so should be reasonably safe here, especially with the perfect execution there. So, and um, Tien going to just keep car farming up the top side. But I think the big problem that I'm seeing now for ADG is kind of what I alluded to in Champ Select, right? The reason I'm not a big fan of Azir and Callista is because Azir like wants to try and like play it nice and slow, wait till he gets a couple of items under his belt, and then look for team fights, right? Then look for. Uh, opportunities where you can try and have that big impact whereas Callista wants to fight you now immediately at every any point in time but that makes it very hard to try and contest oh, things no. like dragon as jj uh, nice smite there to steal that away from tn yeah tn didn't have smite available so tn was just trying to rush it as fast as he could marking trouble in the bottom side as that huge red damage there coming out from viper the pressure continuing as you'd expect on the bottom side tn still no smite here as knight moves in flandre moves in from the top side wayward currently underneath his tower knight trying to protect this red buff but just loses half of his hp for the trouble the scout will be very happy with the result of this one yeah especially if you can get knight low right before this rift herald spawns you're going to be pretty happy so jj already level six just going to sit here and wait for that one to spawn Looks like you've got a big wave for Wayward in the top side, though, which may make it a little bit difficult for EDG to immediately turn over towards this Rift Herald. But uh, you always have to be careful here as Wayward because you have no wards and you have no way of spotting out where JJ's gone to. So you can see he backs right the way up. He's stayed there for so long. JJ just hanging out in the brush, wanting a pick, wanting to try and get Tian on the chickens, maybe. Oh. But oh. in the end, he's uh, just going to miss oh. his W on the Rift Herald. <laughs> Uh, which is spotted out. Wayward came, dropped a ward into that Herald Pit. So now full information for top esports of where JJ was. Um, so the long wait, not really paying off for JJ. But for EDG, they're just going to start this Herald and move the entire gang on up there. Yeah, and it feels like you get a response here from top esports and going towards the Dragon. You can look at the big push Jackie Love and Mark are going for in this bottom side. They kind of know with the push in mid and the fact the Viper Maker already in this top side, they can't contest. But may not have moved across quite quick enough so i'm unsure if they can actually uh try and answer for the dragon response right now because of the amount of control scout actually has on this mid lane yeah knight just clearing the waves but not able to do much more no pressure on the plates on the bottom side oh mark that could not 
have been any closer. The damage actually going through, but you do get that tiny grace period on the end of your recall. So Mark getting away with it just about. Uh, but I mean, as you say, Drake not taking. I mean, lucky for Mark as well, because you've now got Rift Herald for JJ, and you've already gotten two plates taken on this bottom side. So for Viper Mako, they're going to reset now. But if Mark had died, it feels like JJ just immediately runs bot, places Rift Herald, they get Tower, and that's such a massive influx of gold in towards Viper. But I still think that's going to be the game plan here for EDG off of this reset from Viper Mako. Try and move their pressure into this bottom side. But at the moment, I mean, for EDG... It's just la solo lane dominance. I say the lane dominance across the board here is kind of paying dividends. For yeah, CS leads in every lane right now, but at least top esports get themselves a Drake. So something on the board for them, but they're a thousand gold down as TN might look for an engage onto Mako. There's a knock up the rest of the team trying to get in with the wild growth on TN, but Mako flashes out. So EDG walk away from the play top esports with a Drake. But as I said before, a pretty chunky gold lead in favor of EDG. And now with Herald in pocket, JJ moves to this bottom side. Yeah, and this is what we're talking about, right? You've got Rift Held, two plates already gone on the spot side. They're just trying to make this play. And um, the only thing that I'm looking at, though, is no real push in mid for stick out. It means that you've actually got Knight already moving down here. So this might be dangerous for EDG. Could be. The Herald will get its charge off, but EDG need to get out of here. They do have the Renata. And it looks like Knight will see better of the play in the end. But Scout just moves into the mid lane instead. Gets a hit onto the tower. That'll be his second plate of the game. So that is six plates taken across mid and bottom lane. There's a bonus plate up there for Flandre as well. So seven plates so far in favor of EDG. And you can see it in the gold as they are 2,000 up at 11 minutes without a single kill on the board. Yeah, individual lanes just going great for them. This has kind of been the comfort zone for EDG for a long time where they can turn these early lane leads into objective leads. Now, I will say there was no... Rift Hero Gold gone towards Callista or the Renata. In that play, it all went towards JJ. So, a little bit unfortunate, but uh, EDG might be in trouble still. Mako down to half HP as Viper tries to get some damage on out, but Polymorph. And now Mark moving forward. Jackie Love half HP. Knight under the tower. Perfect execution available, but no minion wave. And he doesn't pull the trigger. Twice now. Knight has roamed down to the bottom side. Twice now. It's been denied by EDG. I mean, you still got the hostile takeover for Mako, so not wanting to dive underneath the tower, you got the bailout as well. There's just no way you get to make that play as nice. And it means the scout again gets to just keep up the pressure in the mid lane, right? Just slowly chipping away at this turret. Luden's Echo already completed the first mythic in the game for a scout in this mid lane. And looks like Viper Mako, at least with the control JJ has in the spot side, should be able to get the tower off this next couple of waves. Them. Especially against the Zeri when you have so little wave clear oh, in the early TN, game. Like, yeah, Tian is here. JJ moving over though. I don't think this is a fight Top Esports can take, but they're going to take it anyway. Viper down to half. There goes the ultimate. But the hostile takeover is massive. Knock up Skalor. There's one for Viper. There's two for Viper before he falls. What a play from EDG. The bailout was beautiful from Mako. I saw what Top Esports were trying to do. Low health bars on Viper and Mako, fantastic. Let's go in, we'll cyclone everyone, we'll get the damage that we need. But that hostile takeover made it impossible for top esports to follow up. And now you get two kills, the tower as well. Scout even coming down to help get that gold as well. So Scout, massive off of all the plates and towers that he's been able to gain. <clears throat> Whereas when you look at Callista now for Viper, huge on the play. And look, it's a great idea, right? But I think Tien... Needed to invest his flash here to close the gap before Mako gets this uh, hostile takeover. Hits every single member. The bailout as well keeps Viper alive just long enough to get the uh, the kill onto the monkey. And as well then the knock-up securing one more for Viper. So now this is dire straits for top esports. And very different from what we've seen from top esports even throughout playoffs. They've been so aggressive, but this is, hasn't been the case here. Absolutely beautiful gameplay coming out from Maker and Vi Maker. <laughs> That's Viper and Maker combined right there. Um, we've seen so many times across the course of this split that Viper on Callista will squeeze massive damage out from the champion. While it, when he's on barely any HP, there's been multiple clips of him doing exactly that, finding return kills. And when you pair it with the Renata, I mean, this is why it was such a huge pick 
throughout the year. I mean, Scout, though, has just been moving around the map, picking up plates, picking yeah. up gold for himself. He's already got that Ludens. Getting a bonus plate there just at the end before they fell off. And like you say, it does feel like Dire Straits the top esports. The 3,000 gold down at 14 minutes. And it's against a team like EDG that will not allow this gold lead to go anywhere. Jackie Love pulled in. Viper chunking him out. There's the knockup. JJ jumps in as well. Jackie Love trying to stack up, though, and get the damage back out. Viper in the bailout. Can they find the kill for him? Tian surviving, and it turns around. We said it was Dire Straits. But that's Top Esports' comfort zone. Flandre finds one in return. But Top Esports are back in the game. Top Esports find a fantastic fight at this second Rift Herald. And that will give them so much coming forward. Not only do they get the kills and the gold, they'll get the Rift Herald. They'll get to get more control over the map. And even look at Dragon as well. Ooh, Fondre, what are you thinking here, bud? Yeah, he's feeling saucy, but uh, I don't know. Wayward just going to trade very heavily into him here. This will be Tien. Finishing the Herald off. Resets for top esports. Pings on the Drake, though, for EDG. They should get that Dragon as a compensation prize. And I think the communication was just off here in EDG. The cooldown on Mako's ultimate is nearly there. It's not the cooldown that you're seeing on the bottom of your screen. It's just about to tick over. And I think that's why they thought they could go in. But because they didn't have that available, the hostile takeover isn't there. Viper gets demolished before he can even bring it up. And you can see just after he dies, the hostile takeover comes up for Mako. So I think just mistiming their ultimates a smidge there as I thought they could get the pick and not expecting that many members of top esports to show up as well. Now EDG group up for this Drake on the bottom side. So that would be one Drake apiece. As you can see, you know, Wayward and Tien in the area, but Tien not interested in the Dragon. Just going for his camps right now. This Knight pushes in the top side, gets some solo time on this tower. Scout moving over, but... It's hard to say whether Knight will actually be able to finish that tower. Akali not exactly known as a massive split push threat yeah. with just a protobuff. No, no, the Lulu diff. The Lulu stopped the but actually, no. Uh, no, not going to be able to um, to try and get it. But does deny a good wave. Manages to equal up the CS lead that we're starting to see accrue for scouting that mid lane. And I think that's the big thing for um, Knight. As he's got the Hextech protobuff, is like trying to get now towards like the Sork shoes, get himself up towards the Shadow Flame. And that's where you're going to be a real threat at these dragons. I think the big thing though, is that we've seen a dragon of peace now on both sides. So it feels like there's going to be a very much a late game scenario that we're going to be playing towards here with both teams. And I mean, honestly, you've got Scout Azir that does great at that point. But when I look at top esports, their late game is terrifying. Uh-oh, Flandre's in trouble here. Wayward already flanking. Harold gonna come down. Knight is here. Tien going in with the knockup here. And Flandre is gone before the play even begins. Harold not even needed. There goes one tower. Look where EDG are on the map. They want to trade things, but there's a Herald pushing in this bottom side for top esports. It'll be traded for a tier one in the mid lane as Jackie Love tries to contest. Needs to be cautious, but dodges the skill shots. Wayward moving in. This could be two towers for top esports, but looks like they won't commit. Yeah, I mean, you've got Scout, who's already taken half a health bar off that top lane turret, and you're losing mid. So, honestly, with the map presence that EDG picked up, that kind of works out as a bit of a favorable trade for them, just because of the early advantages they picked up when it comes towards those terror health bars. So, nice job by EDG to respond. And this is kind of what we saw similar to uh, Top Esports versus JDG. Was Top trying to make these plays, trying to push their advantages forward. But JDG kind of just playing the map better. And EDG looked like they might have learned a bit from that as well. And trying to play that style as well against Top Esports too. Certainly Scout, right? Because you can see that so far this game, 0-0-0 zero, zero, zero for him. Not been a part of any of the action of the game so far. As Wayward finds himself a knock-up onto Flandre. Looks like a bit of an all-in here. Fate Sealed goes wide and has to dip back to his shadow. Drops a cheeky little grump on the way out as well. As he knows, it's not worked out. No, but they will spot out where JJ is, so at least getting a little bit of information there as to how they can try and approach this now as top esports. Knight going to try and push out this top side as he's waiting for the, the next dragon to try and come up and available for them. Um, you're going to be looking at Tien as well, trying to see if he can get some sort of control over River, but uh, it's it's easier now for top esports to try and play out through these side lanes. Like Wayward, as we can see, winning out from the 1v1. Knight as well, going to be able to put a lot of pressure on towards scout in that solo lane so you've now got to be quite careful as edg about how you play out these side lanes and play waiting until you can force fights at these neutral objectives i kind of want to talk about 
the potential 5v5 factor. We've not really talked too much about it so far this game because there's been a lot of, even though the kill count is low, there's been a lot of posturing, right? There's been a lot of uh, potential skirmishes. But I feel like, you know, when you've got a Callista on your team, inevitably, there's probably some kind of timer on your composition. Yeah, I think the... So, it is alleviated quite a lot by the fact you got the Renata there. Renata scales fantastically into the late game. Um, same when you look at the Azir. But the big problem is, like, Yone, a beast in the late game. Zeri, a beast in the late game. Wukong offers more than Xin Zhao in those late game fights. And same when you look towards the, the Akali, not too much of a pushover as well when you get to that late stage. So, I think the biggest problem for ADG is a case of, like, how do you try and force these fights early? when you only have a single dragon to your name. But I still think, like, when you get to full-on 5v5s, it still comes down quite a bit to execution. Because if top esports can't find flanks, right, if they can't get onto Scout and Viper, if they try to play front to back with the hostile takeover, opportunities for Flandre to find big Mega Nars because top esports are so short-ranged, I think that's where you can see a win for EDG. Yeah, certainly possible. And, and also, just, like, picks can happen. Mechanical outplays can happen yeah. when you've got the level of raw talent oh. of both of these teams. Is the recall going to finish? Scout cancels it himself, and Tian goes under the tower. Wild growth is there. Scout's still going, though. The minion's not going to be able to tank for him, but that's his time up. Tian with another 4 1 and 2 for the jungler. And this is what we were talking about. Top Esports wanting to play it through side lanes. And they're finding these moments sneaking around the vision the top that EDG have and are now getting advantages for Knight. 0-0-5, he would have loved to pick up some of the kills that Tien has, but this will be two towers now for e uh, Top Esports as EDG traded for the Dragon. Yeah, two towers. Big moment for Top Esports and also, coincidentally, the best Lord of the Rings film. Jackie Love trying to defend in the mid lane here and we'll be able to clear those minions away. So Viper and Mako leaving empty-handed, but at least the team got that drake for themselves with a hex tech soul stacking those drakes up will be crucial but we're still a long way away for a soul for either of our two teams yeah i think though the biggest problem now for edg is like trying to continuously defend against the pushes that top esports are going to be able to make because azir can clear the wave against the kali underneath the terror but doesn't want to like go up in lane in case he ends up having night chase him down so if you're playing very defensive as Azir, well then Knight can very easily push in this top wave. You've already seen that Wayward is more than happy to push in deep on this bot side against Flandre. And then trying to defend mid lane turret becomes impossible for EDG because top East court forts can quickly collapse onto this mid lane structure. So uh, EDG, you can see suddenly their vision starting to drift more defensive back into their jungle to try and spot out movements like this from Knight so they don't get caught with their pants down. Wayward walks over the wall to try and bait Flandre in. He jumps over though and Wayward misses it. Oh, it doesn't matter! It does not matter! He used the ult as a gap close to set up Knight. Top eSports solo lanes. They've got skill expression and they've got the skill to express it. I love the way Top Esports are playing this map out. They are going into these side lanes. They're doubling up at perfect times when they know that EDG can't really contest or can't really push out. We already talked about, like, Scout. He had to play very safe because Knight could chase him down the lane, because Wayward could suddenly find him and kill him. So if they use that to find those moments on bot side to pick off Terrors, get those kills, and... I mean, for EDG, it started off so well for them, but this is top esports bringing this game right back. It absolutely is. I mean, it was, what, almost a 4,000 gold lead earlier. It's now 2,000 lead in favor of top esports. EDG have lost their momentum. Viper starting to get chunked by this laser. It's two and a half items for Jackalove, and we all know what happens when Zeri hits three. But look at this. Hex gates in. Top esports, five men strong. Baron is on the map. I wasn't really expecting either team to just charge at it, but maybe we just get a 5v5 deck. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think EDG are just like, look, we need to try and force something back in our favor here. We're losing bloodily on side lanes. So let's see if we can bring anything to a fight that might be even nice. We'll spot a JJ. But I mean, top esports again, there are no pushovers in this fight right now. 
No, not at all. This isn't even about Baron. This is about Red Buff. Empress Divide, massive here as Wayward alone in the fight, but turns golden. Knight now getting into the mix as well. Scout, low on HP, taken down by Knight. And Top Esports move forward. The meat grind of a flying tray knocks them into the wall. He doesn't have the damage as JJ falls. And Top Esports wipe the floor with EDG. A clean ace for Top Esports in that fight. EDG felt this game slipping away for them. They try to call the bluff of Top Esports and I mean, they come up with the full house. It's five men dead, a Baron as well. And we'll see it here. Like, there's so many parts that go wrong here. So great engage from Tien, but watch the uh, the hostile takeover. Only hits onto the cone for Tien. Knight is in the back line. And Mark, as Knight's about to go down, pushes forward, gets a wall growth that ends up getting a ton of knockups on towards EDG. And then Flandre tries to save the play, but it's already too, too, too little too late. The AOE roof force from top esports just absolutely demolishes everything I, I mean you see knight take out scout and in the meantime wayward and jackie love pressuring viper and flandre's playing nah so it's not like he can be a big team fight carry in the way that the yone the akali the zeri can it's this three threat composition from top esports and it's working beautifully in the 5v5 12 to 3 and when you think about how this game started it was all edg all day long and now they're seven thousand gold behind top esports playing a blinder here yeah and especially when it, as you say it looked a bit ropey in the beginning where the early game wasn't going their way sket was getting a ton of gold viper was looking good but top esports do a great job of forcing advantages through side lanes finding these picks and slowing the game down enough that they can get that tempo back in their favor now with dragon going to be up in just a moment's time they should be able to just fall back towards that objective but i mean they've got the barren buff as well to try and use and with so many of these uh tier two towers already taken in the early stages it's immediate threat onto the base to JJ here, but decides to disengage once more. Top Esports playing for control using that Baron. Dragon on the map if they want to go for that one, but I'm not sure Dragon's really the objective Top Esports no. are looking for right now. I mean, look, they they were just looking to take down the last of the outer turrets. Now they'll fall back towards Dragon. It's a minute until that Baron wears off, so you'd only get two more waves out of it. But um, this, is, this is just beautifully yeah. played by Top Esports. I like, really good decision on their macro play. And I will Oh, hang on. Wait, wait. Oh, he said she's just going to go in. He has not hit a single all, all game, no. I'm pretty sure. But it doesn't seem to matter here. 2v1 now. A scout arrives. It's a 3v1. Wayward. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. Ah. He's kind of embarrassed himself a little bit there. <laughs> the rare base seals. <laughs> just, just getting <laughs> completely caught up by that one. As, uh, yeah, it has not been so hot with the... Uh, Bait sealed for Wayward so far. Definitely looking a bit more like a bait. I don't know what, what say, he's like, trying to achieve, but his scoreline looks hard. great. And in it the does. team fight earlier, he did a great <laughs> job, but yeah, I don't know. Some of these ults not been ideal. I will say, Dagda, you know, we came in today saying EDG, they're trying to recreate the 2021 bracket. They went through the lower bracket. It's the same scoreline so far. Yeah. Uh, they need a 3 0 in this series if they want to recreate the bracket. I don't think EDG get a 3 out today, buddy. I don't think that's no. happening. No, it's it's looking so dire for them right now. Like, the objective bounty's there as well. Like, if they can get some of these kills back, like, if, the, if they can get an ace, like, there's so much gold on top esports and there's so much, much standing gold on the map, maybe they could do something, but it just looks so unlikely. As we said, like, late game scaling for top esports is in their favor. They've already crested three items on most of their core carries. Like, it's it's so hard for Edward Gaming to find an answer to what top esports are bringing. Unless they can catch Jackie Love in the mid lane, does have Mark alongside him. You can see EDG posturing, but Jackie Love backs away, keeps himself safe. And a, a slow, steady game here from top esports. They have a huge advantage and they don't want to throw that away. And this is something that we've seen from top esports across the course of playoffs. Uh, their, their average game time, one of the highest of our playoffs teams at 36 minutes. This is a team that even though historically they're kind of like a win lane, win game team, this is a team that actually wants to play for late game team fights and wants to play slowly but surely, make sure they don't make mistakes. 
Yeah. I will say, though, they are also a team that is incredibly bloody. <laughs> like, yeah. they they are definitely one of the bloodier teams that we expect, especially when you look at how they have been, like, going tooth and nail against so many teams like JDG earlier on. And we haven't seen a huge amount of slower pace games from them. So I think kind of getting to see different um, sides to top esports, like game two against JDG was a much slower paced one. But overall, it's it's nice to see the top esports can take a composition where, okay, we take we have to kind of take a bit of a beating in the early stages, play it through smart macro, through side lanes, you know, utilize the fact that we can link up wayward and night correctly like this was a really smart game from top esports that just kind of lends itself to kind of the bloody mayhem that we've seen coming through from top esports when they want the game to end up like that yeah it's worth mentioning as well that statistics like game time can be very misleading anyway because when you think about top esports the games they played they've all been against edg and jdg those are hard games to win so inevitably your game time does slow down there uh jackie trying to clip some vision as top esports do feel like they're stalling out a little bit here, Dagda, and part of that is the nature of the fact that they don't have that much range to work with. Yeah. It's very difficult to siege for top esports with the comp they have against the comp that EDG has. Exactly, and that's why they're waiting for things like the Baron to respawn. That's coming up in less than a minute. And um, Dragons is another thing that where they can try and like force EDG out of their hidey holes. But for EDG, they're just not in any sort of rush. Like realistically, I think the what they're waiting on is like maybe scout can get to his fourth item and scout can potentially make some hero play like we have seen some of the mechanics that scout has shown on this azir now level 16 he feels like the one hope that edg have here oh tp behind the plate though edg trying to group us five using that sun disc in the mid lane here his blind trade joins the team he's almost mega nar as well as jacket of just trying to squeeze a bit of damage down the laser won't come out and it feels like EDG using that Sun Disc perhaps a little early as Baron now comes onto the map. The Sun Disc will buy some mid prio for EDG, but looks like Jackalove is quite happy to try and contest that prio. Wayward down in the bottom side right now has teleport available as EDG push up this mid lane. And that's what top esports were actually playing for there. They TP'd in with nice, so Wayward now has full push and bot, and Flandre can't really try and contest them because he has no TP himself. Scout is the one that has to try and move down he's there because he's the one with teleport, but that means that, I mean, you can see already, like, that bot inhibitor turret's just gone. Yeah. Top esports are playing this map so well. And Scout can't TP downwards because then it's barren for the side of top esports instead because Wayward just answers with a TP up to the top side instead. Beautifully done. And it's now Wayward is chasing Scout in the mid lane there, just trying to get pressure onto the enemy mid lane. Uh, the Sun Disc about to fall. That mid priority that EDG bought with the Azir passive will be gone. Dragon spawning onto the map. But I think Baron is really the juicier objective. Wayward needs to be cautious. The whole team moving over from EDG. Top esports, they're just going to start the Baron off. Yeah, EDG are basically saying, look, our one hope is a Dragon Soul here. Maybe delaying the game out long enough that we can actually look for that objective. But when all you've got left is your base, when you've got an exposed inhibitor on that bottom side, trying to defend against this Baron is going to be so incredibly hard for Edward Gaming. So they're basically... They're throwing a Hail Mary here, hoping that a fourth dragon will come in time where they can contest it, steal it, and look for a fight after. But it's going to be a long, arduous five minutes for them until that next dragon comes up. It really is. Oh, Flandre. I don't know if it'll be five minutes if Flandre's caught on the bottom side. Turns mega, but that ain't going to save you from Knights Akali. And you know what? The bottom lane minion wave abandoned by top esports here because there is no tower. They can kill the inhib without. Wayward trying to pressure on the top side as Viper very far away from the base. That means this bottom inhib is wide open. Everyone on EDG is trying to push out waves, but Flandre doesn't expect the movement that you can get with the hex gates. Gets caught on bot side. Viper, I don't really blame him being on top side. Like, you're not saving that bot inhibitor anytime soon either, so... They end up just giving that, but now top esports just get to put their full attention towards the rest of the structures of EDG. And look at the positioning, right? They are fully in the base. They are threatening to dive against EDG. And EDG just have to back away and respect the power that top esports are bringing to the table. And one of the 
advantages of this area is the movement speed you have, but also you can dash over the wall. So Jaculum can be so aggressive and oppressive on this pick in the face when you've got this kind of advantage. And now Wayward pushing this wave at the top side. Top Esports, a team historically known for coin flipping, for just throwing games away, playing so slow and steady, immaculately taking the game via a macro advantage. Mako in trouble oh and he's gone. Jackie Love eradicating EDG. The face sealed. Sonia's, he still doesn't get one. Scout? But it won't matter for Top Scout? Esports here. Scout's still going in. He goes in 1v5 right here. Does he have the damage? Scout's still going alive. Still managing to knock into the GAs. But Knight is stood on top of him and denies the play. So many stasis, so many GAs. And Top Esports, they keep themselves going. And they will find game number one. Viper being a nuisance. But that is all he'll manage to be here in this first game. Top Esports, another clean ace as they take the first game. Mark's wild growth denying Scout his hero play. He just finished the Rabbidon's death cap. You could see the damage that was being churned out. But again, these minute details making the difference in these team fights for Top Esports. And when we talked about EDG, the difference maker for them in so many of their playoff games has been their spectacular team fighting for top esports to take that and throw it straight back in their face top look absolutely insane right now yeah unbelievable honestly that performance coming out from top esports when they fell so far behind right it was a pretty big gold lead for edg off the start edg playing the lanes exceptionally well getting plates across the board and then that one fight and it wasn't like herald was just spawning but it was a fight around the red buff, realistically. Yeah. <laughs> this was all about the actual red buff as EDG tried to push their advantage, completely denied. And then that close range brawl, everything top esports solo laners could have wanted. Yeah, it was so good. I think the, the the part that I appreciate the most is like how well they were able to find these advantages through side lanes. Like, you know, giving up a little bit of uh, like dragons or a rift herald here and there so they go, right, we will get bot lane terror we will get top lane terror we will make sure that we're creating presence on the map for themselves to actually look to find these moments with wayward mm -hmm. with knight to link up get picks onto flandre and i think for uh flandre a little bit of an unfortunate game from where he did overextend quite a bit but this isn't something new for edg like they have been kind of criticized in the past for you know how long scout stays in a side lane how far flandre is overextended in a side lane when they are trying to get control of the map and it looks like top esports I mean, they had more footage of them coming into playoffs. They still see the weakness and they're punishing it well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the mid-game fights, beautiful from top esports. As you say, EDG trying to push it in, trying to, to find more in top esports. You know, criticizing the weaknesses, essentially. Finding those opportunities. Wayward in that fight, amazing. Knight consistently throughout this game had an amazing performance on that Akali. But to me, honestly, the most impressive player here from Top Esports was Tien. Throughout that early game, consistently finding ways to get advantages, playing opposite, essentially, to what JJ was doing. And then in the fights, consistently being the one to pick up the kills, but then using that lead to find more for his team. And we'll have to see now what exactly is going to happen coming into game number two because it felt like there was a lot of comfort coming through on EDG's side, right? Scouts, Azir, the Callista uh, for Viper, like so much of this was comfort for this squad, yet they couldn't find the win because Jackie Love got the Zeri. We got the Wukong for TN Knight looking great on this Akali and Wayward yeah. bringing out his new flavor of the month with this Yone. Like, top esports were just ready for what EDG were bringing. They absolutely were. I mean, Scout still managing to top the damage numbers. Uh, first time I've ever seen a Renata Zeri jungle matchup. But, you know, that's what playoffs is for, for the craziness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> obviously, the champions slightly mixed up on that graphic. But the statistics were still correct for each of the players. So, Scout, despite the loss, still managing to outperform everyone in terms of damage. That final play, as you say, denied by Mark. Scout was so close to managing to find that hero play. We're going to jump into a break, though. And EDG, I am sure they have plenty more up their sleeves for game number two. There's only one way to find out. We'll see you in a few. 